What's up guys, welcome to Daily Refinement. In today's video, we're gonna talk about something that really grinds my gear, so let's get straight into it. If you are a reseller and you listen to advice or you're on YouTube and you don't have a specific listing goal, you're in really deep trouble because you won't know if that advice applies to you or not. You need to have a very specific goal, otherwise all this information will be very, very distracting. So for me specifically, I want to list an average of 143 items per day. That's my goal. It's my finish line. It's my mission. It's really easy for me to understand when somebody gives me information, does that help me reach that goal or does that pull me away from that goal? If you don't have that, essentially what, you, what happens is you hear something, you'll immediately start to panic and you'll run around like a chicken with its head cut off. You won't be able to determine whether or not it helps you or not. Let me give you some like an example. If you are listing on eBay and somebody says, hey, you should try listing on Depop. If you're thinking to yourself, my goal is just to list 143 items on eBay and that's enough for my income, then listing on a separate platform would take you away from your goal. So you have to think about specifically, is this idea gonna help me reach my goal? And that goal is always a very, very specific number. So I want you guys to comment in the comment section below, what is your number? What is the number of listings that you want each day? And I recommend that be above what you need to pay your bills. So for me personally in the Bay Area, I only need to sell 30 items a day at $10 profit for me to pay all of my bills. I know my exact nut. The reason why I want to do 143 items a day is because I'm trying to accelerate the amount of money that I save and I'm going to put that money into something more passive because otherwise if I just list 30 items a day every single day and I'm just paying my bills, it doesn't get me ahead. I'll have to keep working forever. If you look at the, the reseller forums online, there are people who've been doing the same thing every single year for 25 years. And if you do the same thing every single year, if you do 30 items a day, every single year you make less money. We go over on this channel a lot that everything starts to rise. So even in my storage unit this year, there's already been one rental increase and there's already been a notice to me that there will be at least one more increase this year. So if I just sell 30 items and that's my goal, every single year it'll go down. So you have to think about how can I increase my goal just to maintain, and if you want to retire early, if you want financial freedom, your goal needs to be way above what you need. And I would be doing both sides. I would be chopping expenses, reducing your lifestyle, making it easier for you to get by so that your bills are lower and you have that higher savings rate. The higher your savings rate, the more comfortable you'll feel. And you can think about how many months of runway you have, which is like how many months do you have to uh, how many months can you go without working? So for me, it's probably like 18 years. If I decided not to work at all and continue my current lifestyle, I could survive 18 more years. But again, that's only for just me. I have a wife, I have a family. As you start adding that, your time threshold starts to shrink and you start thinking about, okay, how can I make this last? You have to list more than you need if you want extra money to invest. If you don't want to list on eBay forever, because on eBay, we talk about the best practices, and the best practices are listing every single day so the algorithm knows that you're active. Don't ask me why that seems to work, but everyone can agree. I don't think there's a single YouTuber who says, if you list every day, it will decrease your traffic. No one says that. There's shirts that say, shut up and list, because that's like the main thing. But if you don't want to list forever until the day you die, you need some other kind of vehicle, some other kind of investment, some other kind of instrument that will make you money more passively. On this channel, we talk about taking the money from this reselling and putting it somewhere like real estate, putting it somewhere in the stock market. Don't put it in crypto like me. I bought in it really high, so now I have to wait a really long time. But I'm also not really selling anything. So as I acquire stocks, crypto, real estate, more goods to resell, all I'm thinking about is the future. That's why I have no interest in buying things at this point. I get an item in, I'm trying to buy my freedom, which is something way more powerful. And also it's way more expensive. If you're trying to buy a piece of property that's gonna earn you rental income, you need capital to do the down payment. You need capital for repairs. You need capital in case people don't show up. You know, it's interesting because my shipper is kind of in, he was kind of in the no work movement. Um, just get by and making as little work as possible, trying to make things go as cheap as possible, and now he's kind of switched gears. Okay, moreover, 
If you have no goals or your goals are not exciting, you're not gonna be able to roll out of bed. For me, my goals are really big, so it keeps me really excited, and I wake up and I already wanna get straight to work. If your goals are really low, like I just wanna make $1,000 to get by, I'm selling all my things, I don't have very many things, I'm a minimalist, I, all I need is a couple bucks to eat, that's not exciting. That will not pull you through being an entrepreneur because being an entrepreneur is really difficult, right? There's a lot of things that you need to learn, and there's so many resources out there that just drift because they don't have a specific goal that specific goal will set you free it's not it's really really important to pick a specific number that you want to list whether it be 10 or 5 or 1 or 8 but in my opinion the magic number so hopefully you guys smash the like button consider subscribing the magic number is 30 listings a day and the reason why I say that is you can't accidentally list 30 items a day. You need a really good plan. 30 items a day means you've already figured out how to get stuff in your store, how to list, you have processes for photography, shipping, listing, because you can't accidentally list 30 items. You can accidentally list an item here or there when you're doing it for fun, maybe on your lunch break, maybe you know the nap time hustle, you can bust out one to five listings, but 30 listings requires a schedule. You have to do it at a specific time. If you want to do 30 listings every single day, you'll also make more than six figures. So I recommend everyone out there listening. Of course, there's lots of casual sellers. There's lots of people who think it's fun to be an entrepreneur, so they're in here. But there's also the people on the other side of the coin that need this money. So maybe you are in a financial, you're in financial difficulty, so you're trying to climb out of debt or previous a previous situation. That's a more desperate situation. Those people. It's easier to stay on track actually than the people who don't need the money. So eBay is a full contact sport. You've got to get in there, learn how the platform works, learn tricks in your specific niche. That's why I recommend you really narrow down what you sell. And you guys, you know, to watch me going over to uh, Pat's house, Sando Sports Cards, looking at all the different categories that he sold, and he narrowed it down just to 1,000 items in his store. His 90-day total includes 1,000 sold, so that means he's turning his inventory once every three months. That means 1,000 items, if he just left those 1,000 items up, over the course of three months, he would sell all 1,000 of those items if he just continued the same listing cadence. So I think it's really important to understand what your goals are. His goals are between 10 and 15 listings per day, every single day. Sometimes he takes time off. That's why he leans more towards the 15, but he's averaging 11 items per day going up and 11 sales per day being sold, I call that Resar Nirvana. So the whole family is on the same wavelength, the same, the same idea because they're now supporting themselves. He's leaving the corporate world and he wants to support his wife and four kids reselling. So if you're gonna only list 10 to 15 items a day, they're gonna need to be higher value if you have that type of a goal. So again, it depends. You need to know, if my goal is to list 11 items a day and I don't like listing so much, you need to spend more of your time looking for the most amazing product. So if you are in the high average sale price category and I tell you, you need an inventory system for 10,000 items, it doesn't apply to you, okay? Because you know your goal is to find the most rare items. Your attention should be on how can I figure out what cards are valuable? Who do I follow that chases the sports, the sports niche? You're gonna be sp spending your attention on the how do I acquire the super expensive items? Do I have the money in place to buy those super expensive items? Can I pay 6,000 and sell for 8,000? A lot of people were complaining about me selling an item for 800 or buying for 800 and selling for a for thousand. I would do that all day long because I'm going to make more than a hundred dollars a sale depending on what category. So if I'm buying for 800, selling for over a thousand plus shipping, if I had some finesse and figured it out, I bet I can make a hundred dollars a sale. Who wouldn't want to do that? You just sell 10 items per day, but do you have the volume required to accept returns? Do you have the volume required to protect the boxes? A lot of people complained about the way that I packed those boxes and I think that's good. It reminds people, look, you need to stay in your lane. Some people are confused by this 100 listing challenge. They think that I'm doing it and I'm going off track, I'm not. If I just did what I normally do, there would be no content to talk about. Selling the same thing over and over again is easy. It's easier to do a store that's bigger and sells the same thing than sell small random things. I keep hearing this argument. The only way I can make money is cross list on five or six platforms. Who told you that? That's not true. Just list your items properly on one platform and they will sell. Dividing your attention five or six ways doesn't make sense. Just sit down and write down your attention is split six different ways. 
It's not going to be as a, you're not going to be as effective. There's no way that's the only way you're going to figure out how to sell something. That's not true. So whoever told you that you need six platforms to sell an item, they're lying to you because just think about the math of you diverting your attention six different ways. You're going to fail. You're going to end up sucking six different ways instead of being good at just one. So I want people to really understand as you're doing this, take this seriously, pick a specific goal. There's going to be more and more and more resellers. This $600 tax rule is not going to scare anybody. And I want to just mention something. It's not a change to the tax rule. Okay. A lot of people think it's a change to the tax rule. It's not. It's a change to the way taxes reported. Okay, so these platforms have been collecting money no matter what. It's just now they require the report to the IRS. So they're required. But here's the thing. You have always been required to do that. People just don't do it. They just hear, I'm not going to get a form unless I sell $20,000 or more in $200 transactions. So I don't have to do it. That's not true. Everyone is supposed to report even $1 worth of tax. And I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of people who are underemployed. They're not making enough money. Everything is getting more expensive. Rents, 30% more expensive. Food, 50% more expensive. Everything costs a lot more money and people aren't making a lot more money. If real estate in some areas doubled, did your income double? It didn't. So people are going to be picking up side incomes and people who have a normal job and they have tax deductions taken out already, they're not scared of the $600 tax rule. So people are not afraid of this. So as I'm thinking right now, and the, and the purpose of this video is I want you to stop. Stop reselling without a specific goal. If you're just thinking, I want to make some extra money, you're going to be in trouble because it's, it, needs, it requires a more focused approach to it. If you say, I want to list 20 items a day at $10 profit and make $200 extra, but you already have a full-time job and you're making 60 k at your regular job and you're thinking about replacing your income, with a $60,000, I mean, a $6,000 per month, which is 72,000 reselling, I would say that's similar, right? Because when you work for yourself, there's other expenses like health insurance. You, I require, I, I recommend you guys get general liability insurance for your business. If you sell on Amazon, that's required. So as you start to grow, remember 60,000 regular job, 60,000 entrepreneur, I would pick 60,000 job all day because you don't need to do all this extra stuff required for running your own business. If you want to be hashtag your own boss, think bigger because otherwise it's not worth it. I'll tell you, people glamorize entrepreneurship. It's not that easy. If you're going to do it, you might as well make a lot of money because it's hard. It takes the same amount of effort to make a lot of money as a small amount of money. Trust me, because I've done this for a long time. Me running this with employees is easier than me doing it all by myself. but. Me running it with my employees poorly, which is what I used to do, is harder than doing a good job by yourself. So I'll rank the hardest. Hardest is don't know what you're doing, lots of employees. Easiest is do it by yourself, know what you're doing, and then don't know what you're doing, do it by yourself. That's not even on the, that's not even on the spectrum because that, will, that just guarantees failure. And that's what you're doing when you cross list. So I'm on this, this rampage right now trying to get people to stop cross listing because I believe that no offense to List Perfectly or Vendu, I feel, believe that those services do what they're supposed to do, but they cost money. List Perfectly is $70, is better use, in my opinion, for you to go buy $70 worth of stuff that you can make $100 profit on. So instead of giving this company $70 per month, put $100 in your pocket plus the item. So I think it's really important to really focus on what's important. What is your specific goal that you're trying to get? How much money do you want to make? How many items is that? Then when you have that in your brain, you can start to decide, does this piece of information apply to me or not? Does this piece of information apply to me or not? I think it's really strange when people disagree with my videos because I'm not I'm just stating my opinion for myself. Your situation is different. If you agreed completely with me, you would actually be the moron. If you think your situation is exactly the same as mine and you should do the exact same thing as I do, then that means you need to look yourself in the mirror because the problem is you. If you disagree, that should be the default. You should listen to me and say, you know what? 30 by 8 by 8 boxes, which by the way now are sold out on Uline. I cannot believe that these boxes are sold out. But if you take this, you listen to me, you do the exact same thing, you're making a huge mistake. If you listen to a huge YouTuber and they decide, I'm going to do, I'm going to only sell Tupperware. Why would you only sell Tupperware after you hear that video? Does that apply to you? Do you even have Tupperware in your area? The only situation, okay, this is how different it is. In the same household, if you have a sibling, how, how different are you? You have the same parents 
grew up in the same city, similar upbringing, as close as it gets, and siblings sometimes can be nothing like each other. Okay, so you cannot apply one person's advice to you. And when you disagree with me and you feel like you're insulting me or something, you're not because your situation is different than mine. When you say something, it doesn't matter to me. And what I say to you should just be something that you consider, something that you think about. I like to consider myself shipping background music. Okay, you're shipping some supplies, you listen to my random thoughts, decide for yourself whether or not it applies to you or not. I know this is the hardest thing in the world, but thinking for yourself is what you should get out of this video. So smash the like button, consider subscribing, join my Patreon at patreon.com slash a resource podcast with my colleague Tekken Sports. He and I have been doing the group now for a year and a half. There's over 2,000 people in the group and people are niching down and figuring out how powerful it is to focus on a specific thing. You guys will watch me through this series and see just how much longer it takes to sell a box full of random things and to focus on one thing. One more final thought for that is, when you are a collector, you really understand how to collect things that you own. You naturally learn the correct skills for reselling because if you're a true collector, you're trying to get as much stuff as you can for the least amount of resources. So you're looking for vintage stuff. You're the one hunting in the landfill for vintage whatever. You're the one in the coal mine in San Francisco looking for jeans that are 200 years old. Or you know the four people who do because you're trying to get that into your collection. You know that you have to work X amount of hours to save enough money to get enough to buy your vintage pair, your vintage grail that you're looking for. Collectors have the right mindset because they get really, really deep into one idea and that allows you naturally to learn how to sell. If you want to be a Marshalls yellow tag expert and you want to know when the yellow tag comes out, when they're making it, what items come out and you're the expert, people will love you. You'll be able to make a great living. People who are really good at coupons, they don't just get one coupon book and they're an expert. They basically search every single town around them, every single coupon, they're on every single newsletter, they listen to every single coupon blogger, that's how you become an expert. So I appreciate you guys, but please stop listening to videos and just agreeing randomly with people and not having a specific goal because if you don't have a goal, you won't know if that advice applies to you. Appreciate you guys, take care.